Hi, people. Again, welcome to another episode of Technical Defects. I'm Joe. Bald guy is Ryan. And our special guest this evening is Jeremy Palco. How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing just fine. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Thank you for coming on. Uh, you may recognize him as Andy, obviously, on The Walking Dead, plus so much more. Ryan, take it away. Oh, let me just throw this grenade in your lap here. Just go ahead and dive on it. Um, oh, no, you are do you've done a ton of stuff, man. Um, I have to admit, I, I've seen a lot of the other shows you've done too, because well, my fiance kind of forces me to on some of them, like uh, Bloodline and um, that's a Van- good one, and uh, Vampire Diaries too, right? Yeah, I did a, yeah. a episode and a half on that one, so that was right a lot on. Of fun. well. Let's just jump to the beginning, and where did you start out doing the acting? What made you get into it? When I was in third grade, I played Grumpy in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and it just you know skyrocketed from there. Now, was there... No, uh, I was totally kidding, so I didn't do anything until like high school. Like, it's, it's so funny, I was cleaning out my, my closet today, and I found like old high school photos and stuff, and like I was like your typical jock. Like, I did every sport under the sun and then went on to college and tried sports again and got really hurt, you know, blew out the knees, like, typical, typical story. And then took my first acting class in college, and I just loved it. I absolutely loved it and took more classes and jumped on a cruise ship for a while with Disney and started performing more and wound up in Orlando, and yeah, boom. Well, how, how was that working for Disney? I had a lot of... When we were getting, um, as we were getting older, if you want to call it that, um, myself, some of the other DJs that I know, things like that, were all um, talking about, we should go work for Disney on the cruise line. I oh, always man. wondered how that was. It was, I mean, I was straight out of college, so I didn't have, you know, like a mortgage or a car or anything like that, so I just took off, and man, it was the best job I ever had. I mean, met people from all over the world, and... You know, obviously you get to travel and play, but man, you work hard. You really? work like you work like a hundred hours a week. Wow, seriously. But on the same token, though, you're living on the ship during that time, so you have no overhead, no expenditures, really. I'm assuming. Uh, no, it was it was easy living when it comes to all that stuff. And you made good money, and every night you go to the bar with your friends, and you pay like fifty cents for a beer. So <laughs> now, do they make you crawl around on your knees and play grumpy for that? No, nah, no. Nah. Thank God I didn't do that. So that would have been Although, awesome. All home a few times from the bar. So <laughs> did anybody put a grumpy hat on you at least while you're crawling back? Because I've had worse done to me. Uh, you know what? I should, probably shouldn't say too much more because. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, we'll let that one go. Disney is a good, you know, good company. I always like working for them. So yeah. maybe one day I'll work for them again. I mean, I've never met anybody that's had any real horror stories about it. I mean, I've heard from other like cruise lines and things like that. That they did. Yeah. So I'm with Disney, though, in general, you don't hear a lot of horror stories. I don't know if that's because you sign your soul away, or pretty much sign your soul away. So I could think of I could think of some things behind the scenes, but yeah, man, no, we're not gonna. Yeah, I can't do it. I just can't. You got to get your ass in a Marvel movie. So no, don't do that. Right? <laughs> You're sitting there the going, mouse. "Oh shit! What, why haven't they called you? What the hell?" <laughs> um, but obviously now, um, your most recent. Uh, not most recent. I know you got some other things in the works over there, but uh, The Walking Dead, the big one, man. What yeah. was it like walking into that already established world that you have seen from a distance, and now you're there? It was it was a trip for me because I had never seen the show. Like oh. I'd seen like the first I'd seen the first season. Yeah, and I gotta admit, like I wasn't into it. I just I just wasn't. And I'd actually read for the pilot. I remember a long time ago in Orlando, a couple friends and I. And it was just called, you know, the Untitled Zombie Show or whatever. And so no one gave it, you know, a serious thought. And so I'd seen the first season. When I got cast, I went back. And thank God for Netflix, it was all there. And so I watched, I binged like five seasons in a weekend. I mean, I crammed it. So it was really weird having that really fresh in your mind and then going to set. Yeah. And my first day on set was at the Hilltop, which they had just built. Oh, really? And, yeah. And funny enough, people don't know this, but it's literally across the street from Herschel's Farm. Like oh, people, people don't know that if you look at Herschel's farm and you turn like 90 degrees to the right, there it is. And I remember just like walking on the set and it's really weird because they call everybody by the character names, you know, most of the time. And right. so, you know, when you meet Norman, it's Daryl and 
Andrew Lincoln's Rick Grimes and things like that. So it was kind of a, and I had just been fitted for a cast because Andy gets arm broken in the show. And they had fitted on my right hand, which eventually swapped to my left because I was going around trying to meet people, <laughs> just like awkwardly high fiving them with, you know, a cast. So, um, but that was very surreal. But they brought me in a day early just to meet everybody, yeah. which was, which was really cool. I mean, you had a fitting and everything as well, but. Um, man, yeah, you really got thrown into it because it is in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, no <laughs> cell phones, no nothing. Um, wow. But yeah, it's a different world out there. So, I mean, you had uh, and you had some killer scenes in there. You had scenes with Morgan that were really cool. Um, you know, you had scenes with Jesus and Rick, and it was just like I, I'm just imagining being in your shoes at that point, and you're like, shit, that's Rick Grimes. Is he as nuts as he thinks he? <laughs> Oh, man, like Andrew Lincoln is, is by far the nicest guy. Yeah. I think, you know, for as big as he is and just humble and cool and all that stuff, but I do remember that, yeah, like my first scene was like toe-to-toe with, with Rick Grimes, and I'm pretty but, sure I screwed up like my first line like three times. I was so nervous. But they were really cool. They and, kind of give yeah. you the jitters uh, the, the jitters break, the mulligan on that one, huh? Pretty much, yeah. They, they were like, all right, kid, you got the job. Like, just relax. And after that, <laughs> and it was like, I think Cutlets came up and, like, basically, like, kicked me in the ass and was like, dude, calm down. You got it. What and, kind of weapons training did they give you out there for that? Like, did they just kind of give you just a dirty overview or did they actually put you through some stuff? Um, Monty Simon, or Simmons, is, uh, is a stunt coordinator. And the first day, like, I got a knife, you know, because that's what the Hilltop used. So they really didn't give me any training with that but when we had the fight scenes obviously we took the knife out and they replaced it with like the the rubber uh one but for season eight when we came back um they offered a weapons training class because they knew you know like it was not ever with negan yeah. yeah we're going to war and we're all rolling up with the guns and i've had you know not extensive weapons training but i've you know owned a gun and my dad and i was shot before and yeah. i know how to kill a weapon but i you know i jumped at the opportunity and when we did, we trained for an entire day on, like, like 10 different guns. I'm talking, like, AK-47s, and we shot, you know, like, silenced weapons. We shot, you know, AR-15s. And then I got to shoot uh, a SCAR. I didn't even know what a SCAR was. Oh, but really? If you've seen, like, American Sniper, that's, mm-hmm. like, his gun. And I shot it twice because I thought my arm was going to fall off. That thing hurt so bad. <laughs> and, I mean, that's the, that's the coolest thing about uh, that. Not from – Wow. Learning how to talk today. Um, that's one thing that I always found really cool was the fact that you get to go there and you're playing cowboys and Indians, uh, survivors and zombies, yeah. you know, survivors and saviors. You know, I mean, it's all it's nuts, but you get to go to work and play. I know there's a lot of work involved. Oh, I've always looked at it like that. Acting to me, like I know, like I take it very seriously because that that's my profession. Yeah, but I just, I just. You know, Walking Dead is so cool because there's no egos. Everyone's really, really laid back and having fun. But I've come across certain actors, and they just they think they're God's greatest gift. And I think to myself, like, we are playing pretend guys. And <laughs> Not in this like, industry. That doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> it's, it gets me bugged thinking about it. But like, you are, you are doing what, like, five-year-olds are doing, you know, playing hide-and-go-seek. Like, that's what you're doing. You're pretending. So With a bigger budget. Yeah, you tend to you get a little bit bigger of a paycheck, which is cool. But, <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's a nice part of it. Um, but yeah, so you were there for season six, and what uh, you know, six was that terminus? Was that post terminus? That was after terminus. Yeah, okay. like because I kind of fell off between terminus and yeah. Negan. I personally fell off a little bit, caught one here and there, um, but I came back to it. You know, well, the coolest thing about playing Andy was that Andy kind of introduced the war like he is the like his character my character is the one that kind of stirred the hornet's nest like yeah we had heard we had heard of negan but we hadn't really picked a fight with him we hadn't poked the bear yet and in the scene i had my first scene with andrew lincoln he asked for my help to go basically kill a bunch of saviors and they hadn't killed people yet it only killed you know walkers so it's always fun to, to go back and when people tell me that you know Having, having three seasons on the show, it's really fun, but, you know, you, you want to live forever, but no one obviously ever does. So you want, you know, the character had to have some validation, and that that's really cool to think that, like, yeah, I, I pretty much started some shit. <laughs> it, uh, got some people killed, apparently, so. Now, your demise, do you get to have any say-so in any of that, in any part of the process? 
God, no. Fuck. I was so pissed. I remember, I, you know, I did get the call from Scott Gimple, which is always, which is always nice and not nice, you know, because you're, you're, you're cool enough to get the call from, you know, the, the showrunner. But, you know, as soon as I picked up the phone, I, you know, he said, hey, Jeremy, Scott Gimple here. I just wanted to hang up and just act like it didn't happen. And I've rethought this a lot. Like, my character, you know, spoiler, if you're watching, you didn't know I get killed, you know, next to Morgan and my buddy Brent is there. And he, uh, his character, Freddie, goes down as well. Um, but I was thinking if I just called in sick that day, like, what, what would they have done? Like, would they really have stopped all the shooting just to, like, get my death scene? Or they've been like, you know what, we'll get him in the next couple episodes. Yeah. <laughs> I probably could have prolonged my life a little bit, but but you did not. get to return. We mean did, did did you turn at the end of that? I don't remember. No, 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 no. no. And that that was kind of bugged me because I got shot in like the chest and the stomach, you know, obviously, and they show my body at the end with blood all around it, but they never shot me in the head. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. Yeah, and then the next episode, they just had me wrapped up in a bag somewhere. So I, I kind of thought once I got killed, I was like, oh, I get to come back and. No, nope, not how it works. So no, you didn't get to do a damn thing. At least you got to walk through with a severed head. Yeah, uh, man, that was really cool. That was heavy. It was really heavy. Was it really? Well, we got to hold it for like two hours. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. For the uh, how many it, shots did you take of that at that point? It wasn't. It wasn't that. Yeah, I'm complaining. I'm not complaining to anybody. It was really cool. Oh, he's uh, over, he's bitching. Don't worry about it. It's okay though. I'm not bitching. Well, okay, I'm a little bitching, but it was like three o'clock. <laughs> It was like three o'clock in the morning, and everybody was just so tired. And yeah, it's like holding a jug of water out, you know. And so you hold it for like, you know, five minutes, and it feels like five hours. But yeah, now, look. Um, with all the stuff that you've done, um, what is your fondest memory? Not necessarily Walking Dead, but anything that you've been on thus far. What comes out in your mind like that was just awesome? Oh man. I got good and bad. It's just I remember whatever first, route you want to take, man. I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, I'll, I'll tell you two quick stories. One, like I'm a huge Friday Night Lights fan, so I love Friday Night Lights football. Kyle Chandler, the whole the whole nine yards. And so when I got cast on to Bloodline, we didn't know what it was. It was called the Untitled KZK Project after the producers, okay. and so we didn't know all the stars and everything. And I remember getting on set, and they're like, "Here's the you know the, the call sheet." And boom, top of the thing was Kyle Chandler. And I, I jump in the van to get to set, and sure enough, he's right there. And I pretty much didn't say anything except for hello. I was so scared and nervous, but that was really cool because he's one of my favorite actors. And then I remember when I was shooting Vampire Diaries, we shot off location, and so we had all our trailers and everything. And across the street, there was like, like probably a thousand fans, like screaming teenagers, whatnot. And I'm sitting in my trailer, which sounds not you know cooler than. It is. Like, you sit there, you're bored. You're yeah, so you're bored off your ass, Sam. <laughs> bored off your ass. I mean, like, I know my lines. Like, let's let's shoot this shit. Anyways, I go outside because all you do is you go to craft. You just go get food because you're bored. Anyways, I go out of my trailer, and across the street, 10,000 freaking screaming teenagers start losing their minds screaming. <laughs> and, so, and so I wave, and I'm like, hey, what's up? And I turn behind me, and Ian Sommerhalder had just gotten out of his trailer. <laughs> And so I look like the biggest man. <laughs> and I tried to pull one of those, like, wave and, like, put it behind my head. But Just for the record, this entire <laughs> interview was worth it just for that story. Cheers. That was, that was awesome. <laughs> and it's tea. It's not any booze, I swear. So. Oh, well, sorry. Uh, it's only because I don't have any at home, so. <laughs> hey, I'm just drinking water, so, you know, Joe's the alcoholic of the show. All right. Hold it down. Wow. <laughs> we got Alcohol. love. We got love. So what do you got in the chamber over there, Joe? Strong word, alcoholic. Um, He's going to go to meetings and pout now. Right? Wow. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Uh, No, I actually wanted to touch base on, you know, some of your beginning stuff. Um, Like, never back down. To me, that was a kick-ass movie. And I have a part in that movie and the sequel. Can you go into that a little? Yeah, yeah. Never Back Down was my first uh, speaking role in a film. And I remember I got to the audition and I had to play, obviously, a football player. And you could tell, like, the casting people had no idea what football was about. (laughs) And so some of my dialogue they asked to improv. 
And it was like he had to call out a situation. They were like, oh, you know, yell this, yell that. I'm like, well, I'm, I think I went out for like a tight end or something like that. And I was like, oh, uh, he would never say that. I would never do that. <laughs> like a quarterback might say that. You know, like they would say like call blue 42 and blue. I'm like, that's a quarterback, not a tight end. Anyways, I basically gave them a lecture on football. And then so when we got to set, like I had to basically make up the plays. And, you know, the guys hitting me were like stunt guys, and they were just beating the living crap out of me for three days. And, and it was so painful. But I just remember going, oh, man, I've made it in life. Like, I'm, I'm in a movie. This is cool. <laughs> and, nah, my mom went and saw the movie, and she's like, where were you? I didn't, I didn't see you. <laughs> I, I had the mask on and the helmet on, which I remember Sean Ferris, who has to hit me with it or attempts to hit me, lifted over his head and dropped it, and it actually almost cracked the back of my skull open on set. Um, but, man, I go on, on that for days. But uh, <laughs> Never Back Down 2, I, I got a call, and I auditioned for a different role, and I kind of told my agent at the time, I was like, they do know I was in the first one, right? And she's like, I'm pretty sure they do. Like, how could they not? But I remember I got a call. I was in Orlando, Florida, and I had to be in Baton Rouge, Louisiana the next morning. So I drove – like 13 hours just for the callback. And I got there, read, blah, 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 everything. And I didn't feel like driving home that night. So I got like a $40 hotel room at like the motel, whatever. <laughs> and at like three o'clock in the morning, I get a knock on my door and I go to answer and it's the police. And two police officers ask if they can check my room. And I'm like, sure, whatever. And they leave and I don't know what's going on, but there's a helicopter with searchlights outside. So I take all the furniture <laughs> in the hotel and I put it up against the wall. <laughs> and um, the next day I kind of asked uh, the front desk, what was with the cops last night? They said somebody had robbed a bank down the street and was like loose in the hotel. So that's nothing to do with my acting career, but it scared the shit out of me that entire night. So Did you have an alibi at least? Uh, the, the like half bottle of Jack Daniels on the counter didn't help, but right, you know, yeah, no, that's a pretty like, good alibi. Yeah. It indicates that you were there, so it was like it wasn't me, officer. So. <laughs> it wasn't me, I swear. Um, <laughs> so in the chat room right now, a couple of people saying hi and what's going on. Uh, Flora Fountain, and I, I can't guess that that's necessarily her real name, and if it is, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, she just mentioned something on Twitter that she was gonna be there. Hi, Flora. Yeah, she uh, said you're amazing as Andy, and she misses you on the show, and she has a question. She wants to know what your next project's going to be. Oh, man. Uh, it is back to the drawing board for me. I'm, I've just moved to Atlanta, so I've literally had two auditions this past Thursday. Uh, so holding on for hope for that thing. But I was shooting a film down in Jacksonville a couple months back, and they got put on pause due to some zoning permits or some crap like that. So... Technically, I'm still working on that film right now, but um, I've got an independent project called So Dark. It's on Amazon Prime. Uh, we have two shorts right now. One's nine minutes, one's 20 minutes, um, where I play a, a, a vampire named Sean who basically kills bad people. It's like Dexter with a vampire. Um, again, free to watch on Amazon Prime. It's called So Dark. Um, yeah, staying busy. All right. Uh -huh. Anyhow, um, I probably Emory still wants like to know you. if you are planning on coming back to the Rhode Island Comic Con. Anne Marie, uh, that, love Anne. She's uh, I've met her a couple times at the con. She always spoils me with gifts. Love her. Um, I do plan to come back to Rhode Island Comic Con. Uh, Steve Perry and Altered Reality run these conventions, and they are just first class, awesome people. And uh, if you've never been to a convention, they're just you know meet and greets with you know artists. Um, celebrities, things of that nature. But yeah, I plan to go back. So I'm are actually you, going to California two weeks, three weeks from now. Are you uh, doing a lot of cons right now? Um, I, I just did uh, Albany um, State Comic Con, which was a blast. Nice. Um, nice. You know, if it, it's tough to get into these things nowadays because a lot of people want to do them. Uh, but I got a great management team. Uh, Stacy Williams from Beast Within Productions helps me out a lot. Um, but yeah, I generally maybe once every two months or three months if I can. So, um, so you're starting to get into like the genre stuff now, and I see some Indiana Jones and some Madden figures behind you. What is your uh, geekiness and collecting stuff? What, what what's your uh, what's your poison when it comes to that? 
Um, I think like this, this, this is just my wall of crap. So uh, I hate. <laughs> yeah, I, that's I hate, my wall of crap back there too. I hate blank walls, but uh, this was. I don't know if you can see that. That was done by an artist at a con I did. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, but I'm a diehard Seahawks fan, and that was given to me by a friend of mine. I don't know if you can see that, but um, this was given to me by my friend. It's a rocket raccoon. Oh yeah. Nice. I don't know, like just. If I like it, I like it. But I mean, there's nothing in particular that I collect or anything. I do collect magnets. That's what I collect. Magnets. So I, everywhere I go, like you know, I've been fortunate to travel a lot over the last couple of years. Everywhere I go, I collect or I try to get a magnet. So the fridge is filling up, and it's awesome. So it's just anything from wherever you go. That's all it is. Pretty much, like any any good experience. Like I try to like remember it somehow. Right. You know, a lot of men with you know. You know, and they end up at the bar type thing, so you don't remember all of it. But <laughs> <laughs> like, like I was just in all went to the museum. It was amazing, and so I got a, a magnet from the museum. Done. That's perfect. That's awesome. Oh yeah, that's good stuff right there. Um, yeah, they're saying people in there right now in the chat uh, saying that So Dark is amazing, and they want more episodes of it. We're trying to get it. My friend Carrie Maletta, who's uh, also stars in the second one, is the producer right now, and she lives out uh, not too far from me now. Uh, but she uh, she's in the works, so trying to get uh, funding for it. that's the biggest thing. It's just funding. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Everyone, all everyone's about got you know funding. It's what it all comes down to. That's it. Yeah. Um. Go ahead, John. You look like you got something to say. Yeah, yeah. I actually saw pictures from uh, New York and the con recently, and it, it looked like you had a blast. Uh, I saw some familiar faces out there also. Uh, not sure if you can name drop a little, but what's the most fun or what was the best part of the con for you? This past con? Yes. Um, oh, God, meeting Robert England. So, oh, nice. And Freddy Krueger, and he is just the funniest guy. Um yeah, he was, he was hilarious. And my neighbor, who I've worked with a couple times, total name drop, Ryan Hurst, a.k.a. Opie from Sons of Anarchy, one of my favorite shows. Uh, so it's always really cool to just, you know, chill with him for a couple of days. So That is awesome. And I've seen in the past uh, you hanging around with uh, Ming Chen. We've had him on our show before also. Uh, Super nice him. guy. Yeah, I love Ming. And... Ryan. Oh, you look totally lost. I'm just staring at you going, now what are you doing, Joe? No, um, so. I'm looking at responses. You're supposed to be doing the next question. That's too. how we kind of do these things. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just take over from here. All right, that's so. cool. I'm out. I'll catch you guys later. I'm gonna... I, don't see, I don't see what anyone's writing. I don't know how I could. If I go on Facebook, maybe I could do yeah, that. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We've got it up right now on Facebook. People are uh, talking in there. But you see, the whole thing now is I feel like I need a mug like Johnny Carson. Like yeah. Jeremy does, you know, he has the mug. I feel and... weird because I can look into the camera lens and say hi to everybody, but like the show's going on to my left and then I can look at Facebook over here. So sorry about the wandering eyes, everybody, but that's all right. Uh, look at the camera. I, I'm, I'm an ugly son of a bitch. <laughs> Dang, <ain't> pretty. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm not pretty, but hey. Oh, you're pretty Joe, but that's okay. So pretty. Um, you're where you're, you're where we get all our demographic from. Um, but anyway, because I work the most behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah. So, are you going to be able? To, are you on? What was I going to say? Does this being on Walking Dead does this open up more stuff for AMC eventually for you? I had to think of the proper words of it. I hope so. I mean. I remember as soon as I got killed off the show, I got a, a call, and it was like a brand new AMC show they wanted me to read for. So I uh, read for it. Obviously didn't get it unless you know, unless it's way down the line. But um, yeah, it definitely it definitely helps to have that on your resume as an actor. Now, um, here's another question for you, um, John Barenthal. When he was on Walking Dead, he would always have the din dinners for the cast when they got killed off. We had uh, Michael Nathanson on. Uh, from the Punisher. Oh, I just met Michael at Albany. Yeah, so. yeah, Michael was awesome. And awesome. Uh, really he nice. was telling me, and here's another spoiler for you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't seen the Punisher, close your ears. I'm going to say it. <laughs> Michael Nathanson's character gets killed off in it. And um, he uh, 
where the hell was I going with this? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, John Barenthal, when he was on The Walking Dead, he would always have the dinners for whoever got killed off. Did they maintain yeah. that tradition? He carried it with him over to the Punisher, but did I they think, do anything? You know, I think early on in the first couple seasons, there was very, you know, so it was a smaller cast. That's true, place. too, yeah. And so, you know, there was one death like every, like, five, six episodes. Yeah. Now everybody's like, dying every episode. Now everybody's just dying left and right, so it would cost somebody somewhere a lot of money. Uh, no, I didn't have that. Um, I just didn't know if in general they were keeping that as a tradition or something, or if that was just him, you know? I think that was just something he did. Um, I did a panel with him and Scott Wilson and uh, Elizabeth Ludlow, um, and, uh, Kyla Kennedy up in Colorado once, and he, he addressed that. I forgot what he said, but he just, yeah, it was something he brought upon himself. And, you know, like when Herschel died, you know, John came, flew in just to have dinner with him or something like that. Um, but no, when, when I went, it was unfortunately, you know, all out war. And so I think there was, like, was dying. there was like 50 deaths in the first three episodes. So no, I didn't get that. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about the body count on that one. <laughs> I was actually just watching it again today, uh, episode one, two, and three. Um, it's fun working on those. That was actually my favorite. Was episode uh, one of season eight? Okay. Because most of season six and even the one episode in season seven. I mean, it was a small cast. I mean, you're looking at twelve, fifteen people max. And when we came back for season eight, it was like the first day of school. <laughs> it, it was like everyone was there. There was a hundred people on the call sheet, and I remember the first day it just, it just started pouring down rain. Like when we were in the open field. And we all had to get into like a school bus. So like we're sitting in this school bus during a monsoon and just the, you know, the whole cast is there from, you know, Andrew Lincoln to Kari Payton. And we just so much fun that first week. Um, they, uh, I, yeah, I can't imagine that. I mean, it was just chaos watching that episode. I mean, it was utter chaos watching it. I couldn't imagine being in the thick of it. Um, yeah. I was doing the no-no again. I was reading comments, and I, I got to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they – what was the point? Of, oh, yeah, we talked about the dinner and everything else. I, I'm i so not normally derailed. But um, All right, so I got a question, oh, and oh, it, it's kind of a it, – it, it's kind of a – contest between Ryan and I that we do generally um, Marvel or DC Marvel Done. are you into the comic book movies at all oh I love them I love them I was yeah. actually I don't know if I can say this but I was at Pinewood Studio last week for a callback for something nice uh, it was a TV show it wasn't a Marvel film of any sorts but that was the first time I'd been at Pinewood Studios obviously where they shoot a majority of the films and right. man that place is like a prison like oh. sign in, sign your life away, no cameras, no phones out. If you need to make a phone call, you have to be on the outside of the gate or something like that. Uh, you get a pass, you get, you know, escorted around. It's, it's pretty serious stuff, but, um, that, that is a goal of mine to get on one of the Marvel films somehow way, shape or form. But yeah, DC, I don't know. I enjoyed wonder woman, but justice league, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't a fan. That's all right. All I ever say about Batman V Superman is Martha. Martha, oh, we're friends now. If they call, what's that? Yeah, if they call, if they call. I mean, I love I love DC. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the Flash that still doesn't have a director for the fourth time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, the Ezra Miller uh, Flash keeps losing their director. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Hard to so, keep it. Anyway, to stay on point, uh, Jeremy, <laughs> I used to like you, um, and you went with Ryan's side. So, uh, Don't they all? Anyway. <laughs> uh, no, it's been an ongoing thing between Ryan and I for the past year. And, uh, yeah, you're about the oh, all of them. Ninth, ninth celebrity that said the same thing. So, fair enough. Oh, oh! You froze on us for a second there. I did. Sorry. How dare you? How dare you? Get your you stuff working, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of comic books and everything, so 
dream project for Mr. Palco, what is it? Dream project? I don't know. Like, I just know there's things that, like, I enjoy watching growing up. Like, I love the Bourne series. Like, I, I think that type of film would be awesome. Um, obviously, Indiana Jones is one of my favorite movies of all time. So, anything along the action scene, like, I just... Like, I got a small taste of it with Walking Dead, you know, running and gunning and, you know, fights and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, something, something action-wise would be a lot of fun, you know. Somewhere where you get a stunt double. <laughs> I looked at IMDB, and you have Stuntman under your belt? Um, I've definitely done a lot of physical things. Um, uh, for instance, like, my first movie, Never Back Down, like they said, you know, you know, we'll give you the role basically, but you got to play football. And I'm like, well, I played years of football, so absolutely. And then I learned the difference between playing football and playing football in a movie is completely different, obviously. Um, but I got so beat up. I mean, the guy hit me was this guy named Danny Hernandez. And if you look him up, oh man, he was like in 300 and Die Hard and oh, Spider Man, Jesus, and, Jesus. Uh, oh, Avengers he was in. Like, he's a tough dude, and he just beat the living crap out of me for three days, but um, not something I take lightly in the stunt community because I have a lot of friends who are, you know, legit stunt people, and what they do is, you know, you know, actors that are like, oh, I do my own stunts, but, you know, it sounds cool. No, it's it's not. Like, it is a dangerous, dangerous business. If you, um, if you think you can do something and you tell the stunt coordinator, oh, yeah, I can do that, and then you wind up hurting yourself, I mean, they, things can go bad really quickly. So I leave that to the professionals. You know, IMDb is just one of those things that, you know, if you do the stunts and you get a little bit of credit for it, then it'll pop up on your IMDb, which is fine. But, no, I don't promote that I, I do stunts. Um, you know, but if you want to punch me in a movie, I'll fall down. I don't need someone to, like, do <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you me. had, uh, was it season six where you had that brawl with uh, Abraham and Daryl was pulling you off? Oh, yeah. I had, a guy for that. I had a stunt guy for that, and uh, when we shot, he was sitting, you know, in the shade drinking lemonade or something like that, uh, while I was, <laughs> you know, thrown down with Mr. Cutlets, and that was painful. Oh, my God. I remember we got there, and we rehearsed with, like, a mat, and we're like, all right, he's going to hit you, he's going to lift you up, he's going to put you right there, like, right next to the tree where the soft spot is, and when... I asked Monty, I was like, so when they yell action, what do we go, like 80% or something like that? And he just laughed. He's like, dude, hold on. Just <laughs> hold on. And so, you know, we get into it. And the only thing we had on were elbow pads and knee pads underneath our, our clothes. And so we'd only, we only did the scene three times because when Cutlets lifted me up, he was like a bull. And he put me so far from the spot where we were supposed to land I landed on just like rocks and gravel and he would like the script said like, you know, Abraham's on top of Andy and they roll over. No, it just turned into a street fight. Like we just brawled and it reminded me of like ninth junior high, like wrestling days. And I just like, just kicked in. I was like, all right, I got to get this guy in his back somehow. Just go for it. I think I tore every muscle in my body. And the next day I was like black and blue um, but we had a good laugh about it, and it looked good on camera. That's all. Yeah, I was really saying, is that the take they used? Was the one where you guys just? You know what's? You know what sucks is I'm pretty sure they used the first take. <laughs> so the two other ones after that were just like shits and giggles. Michael Cutlets wanted to kick my ass. I don't know. <laughs> pretty much, you must have done something. You know, <laughs> pissed him off the first day. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did um. Were there any other scenes that you had like that? Or was that pretty much... I'm just trying to remember back. It's hard to pick out all the stuff. Let's think of some fun stuff. I remember when we shot the scene where we invaded the Saviors and Andy holds the head up. It, it was, like I said, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. So people were kind of short-tempered and you know people were kind of grumpy, not in a good mood. And I remember the scene, if you have seen or haven't seen it, um, all the cast comes running in because I'm like the, the bait, the decoy, and everyone comes running in. And so for the first take, everybody came screaming in to high heaven with their arms like flailing and Stephen Young just um, making the weirdest noises. You know, and it, he basically was like breaking the tension. It was a gag. It was it was hilarious. <clears throat> but in like the new actor on set, I was like, fuck, did they change the script on me? Like, I, 
scared. I was like, shit, like something's going down. And then, and then after that, I could just see, I could just picture you. Then everyone but. just like had a sigh. It was hilarious, and you know, we, we continue with the night. So sorry to interrupt. I was gonna say you're probably still holding the head at that point, going, "This fucker's heavy." Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was I'll funny, guys. But come on, you think I'm joking? But if you're out there, grab like like a five pound, du- you know, dumbbell or you know, thing of water and just right. hold it out. See how long you can hold it. It, it gets tiring. I'm already. Yeah, tired. right. Ryan, Again. apparently he ha- he hasn't seen our physique compared to his. Um, we last about thirty seconds, I think. Yeah. Like I said, not complaining, but man, tougher than it looks. So I'll tell you what, right thirty on. seconds is generous, Joe. Mm. <laughs> Was there any other hazing or anything? I mean, it looks like you guys had a blast behind the camera. I saw pictures of everybody just having fun, hanging out. No, there's no hazing, but yeah, like everybody, you know, for most of, uh, you know, if you ever get booked in the show, actors out there, you get put into a hotel with, um, you know, the other actors that don't live locally. So um, it turned into like a little, um, almost like summer camp, at least for season eight anyways. Season six, nah, I was just in my own quiet little hotel room in the in the woods. But um, for season eight, they put us all in the same hotel, so every night we were you know, going out to dinner, we're going hiking. I remember we went uh, shot um, crossbows um, with um, Diane, played by Carrie Cahill, who she's a natural, and Cooper Andrews, who plays Jerry. He's a badass when it comes to the crossbow. He was shooting him like a hundred yards away, just nailing him. So, <laughs> I mean, you guys are us, in the middle of nothing, so that's perfect. Yeah, middle of nowhere, and the rest of us are just trying not to shoot each other. So. <laughs> Like the bow and arrow game where you shoot the bow up in the air. And you just... <laughs> That's what I was meant to do. No one else wanted to do it. So. Oh, I wasn't nuts enough. I, you know what? Again, I'm not that. I'm not mobile enough to be volunteering to dodge an arrow. Nah, <laughs> we got through it, but no, a lot, a lot of fun. The cast, um, I'd say, 99 percent of them are just outgoing people, just friendly. So it's really cool. Yeah, it definitely looked like that. I mean, I, I saw a ton of pictures, and it does look like a blast, a family environment kind of thing, and uh, that is really cool. Ryan, I am going to check o- over comments one more time, and I think we're almost about that time. And I'm uh, over here choking up my lung along with it, so. Well, that's what happens when you smoke, boys and girls. No, that's what happens when you get shitty medication from your doctors. They go, there's going to cause an itch in the back of your throat. This is what you get. You could laugh a little bit. It wasn't that bad. I wasn't being that mean. <laughs> I, was, I, was think, I was thinking like whiskey's a cure-all, and then I was thinking, do I want whiskey tonight? That's that's what <laughs> I want whiskey every night. I was legitimately thinking that, yeah. What, what kind of whiskey I mean, do you normally drink? Uh, Whatever's on sale. I don't know. <laughs> like not, and I'm not above in, that. I've got a bottle of black velvet in there. so Nothing in a plastic bottle. I think that's kind of it. Like, I, don't, I don't drink enough to go like, oh, that's my brand, you know? <laughs> it, it, uh, I have, I've been a nightclub DJ wild, for 20 like, years, so. What's I've that? All, I said I've been a nightclub DJ for 20 years, so I've had many brands over the years. Yeah. I, you know, phases in life. Like college, it was vodka. When I was like on the cruise ship, it was always rum because you know you're a pirate out in the ocean, so you got to have rum. And I just <laughs> think right now whiskey sounds good. And nice. listening yeah. to Jimmy Buffett. So, um, excuse me. Wow. You gonna um, make it there? I don't know. I might not. Joe, go ahead for a second. I gotta get a drink of water real quick. Well, again, I'm looking things over. Uh, we got Anne, Flora. Got to do the shout outs. It's part of our gig. Uh, Lynn, and who else is going on? And Justin. Um, Justin who? Justin James Sparks. Oh, fucking that's um. I'm blanking on. I think that's Ethan. From Walking Dead. Justin. Really? Kuch- Justin Kuchlon. Big dude. Gotcha. I think so. I think I think that's his... Uh, I, I may be throwing him under the bus here, but like a lot of people have different names on Facebook because there's a lot of weird fans out there. I'm not going to lie. He just said hi and threw a heart symbol up, so I'm kind of assuming. Oh, that's, that's my Justin. That's Justin. <laughs> Miss that dude, man. How you doing, man? He was oh. in uh, Oregon this weekend. He's doing a convention or something like that so, um, what's going yeah, on so, Justin? sorry i'm back can, 
Can you touch base real fast on any conventions you have coming up in the near future? Or I will be doing um, what is it? Sundial Bridge Comic Con in California. Uh, I'll be there with Aaron Schwartz. Um, you know him from Mighty Ducks and Heavyweights, and then the awesome, awesome dude named Peter Dante, who's basically you know every Adam Sandler movie he's in it. So um, he's a quarterback and water boy and. The guy in the base. Yeah, Peter Dante. Awesome dude. Nice. Let's try to get him on the show. Yeah. He's oh, funny. yeah, absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. He's great. All right. So you got that coming up. Um, where can we find you on social media if we want to keep up with you? Uh, just Jeremy Palco. I'm pretty much, yeah, just no fancy handle names or anything like that. Just Jeremy Palco on Twitter. I do Twitter more than anything, I think. It's just easier. Um, Instagram, I like to Instagram. That's fun stuff, too. Um, it gets annoying when people are like, please follow me, please follow me. On, on Twitter, I, I tend to follow most people, but on Instagram, like I actually like seeing my family and friends' photos, so if I don't follow you, don't be hurt. Your kid's just not cute enough, and your food's not good enough. Like, I don't care about your cats. I really don't. Well, I, are you sure? I've got some. I got a cute one. I mean, you want to follow me? I'll follow you. I'll follow you, man. You'll follow me anywhere. Oh, all right. I'm easy, well, I'm easy though. I was at a con once, and like this kid came up to me and was like, "Oh, can you please follow me on Instagram?" And he like it clearly made his world. And I was like, "Have your parents come over here, and I'll get their permission, and then I'll follow you." So. Nice. I'm like, please tell me you monitor your kids. You know, <laughs> you know yes. I um, I wish I did more with Instagram, but I never think to take pictures of things that I'm doing when I'm doing them or videos. I, I really I should. Instagram, you got to do it sparingly. Like, it's either got to be funny, meaningful, or, or like, or related to your like career. You mm -hmm. know, you can't just you can't just post every 20 minutes because you can. Like, it's <laughs> it's annoying. I've seen Sorry. that and it's horrible. It's like I made pancakes. Snap. Yeah, you hit a nerve <laughs> on me on that one. Sorry, I'm just getting sick of it. No, yeah. you're right. Absolutely. I mean, but you know what's really bad is it's not just young kids doing it nowadays. Not young kids. Jesus, I sound old. It's not yeah, just. <laughs> not when you did. Yeah. You kids with your damn rap music. Um, But yeah, no, it's not just kids doing it and stuff. It's um like grandparents now are sharing every little aspect of their life on social media in some capacity. And the best part is, is all the really old people, they sign it like a letter every time. Love, yep. Grandma. That's why I love my dad. He's like, I'm not doing social media. I'm not doing it. So way to stay strong, Dad. Way to fight the good fight. <laughs> fight the good fight, so. Yep. Yeah, I only do it for the show, so. <laughs> That's about I was going to say, like, I think most actors nowadays, like, you have to, it's, it's kind of a part-time job. Like, I think I wake up every morning for, like, at least 30 minutes, you know, respond to as many people as I can. Like, I love keeping in touch with people and just, because it's so easy to say hi. It's really easy. Right. Um, like, it, you know, I'm a fan, too. I freak out. Like, I posted something on Twitter yesterday, and, like, I'm a diehard Seahawks fan, and they totally, like, retweeted it or something like that. So that, uh, I, I get the, I get the, the cool interaction between you know you know people on social media but just stop with the fucking cats i'm sorry um <laughs> bravo bravo that's great i'm not a cat person so you know what i wasn't until i own one i still like my dog better yeah. but um I, i've grown to like this cat i don't like other people's cats though i was just about to say so if, every time a cat person is like I don't like cats, but my cat is different. No, mine's not different. I'm just used to his, his angry ass. That's it. My that's cat's it. literally an asshole. He'll walk up to the counter, look at me, and just shove something off. We're like, what? Well, that's what cats are. They're like the uh, drag queens of the animal world. You know, I'm like, look at me, look at me, look at me. You're not looking at me, Crash. Right? I'm going to come, like, fuck up your laundry you just cleaned. So <laughs> that's what they do. Oh, you see that corner of the room? Yeah, you're going to be scrubbing in about five minutes. Yep. Uh -huh. So, all right, brother. Well, I appreciate you giving us the time, man. Like, honestly, we are eternally grateful for everybody that uh, that takes the time to come hang out with us for a little bit. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. And, and if there is anything that you want to announce, please use and abuse us any way you can. 
Sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah, we're cheap hookers like that most of the time, so it works out. All right. All right, so... <laughs> I sounded too excited on that one. Sorry. No, no, that was the appropriate level of excitedness. Excitedness. So. You put. Gotcha. Um, anything you want to say before we go? Nah. Um, just uh, appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, like I said, you find me on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I have a Facebook account. I don't really use it that much anymore. Um, but yeah, that's where I announce all my upcoming travels and you know gigs I'll be at. So hopefully. Uh, Hopefully, I got new stuff to report coming soon. But all right, just so for future reference, I am down in Florida. Next time you come down here, let me know, and uh, we'll get it on the show and we'll publicize it. Awesome, awesome. And we'll have a beer. We can do that too. And I'll just stay here in Cleveland. Don't mind me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Jeremy. Thanks, Joe. Say bye to the people. Goodbye, people. Jeremy, thanks again. Everybody have a great night. Jeremy, hang out with us for two seconds while we wrap things up. And we'll just so you guys. guys know, my lungs over here having a cigarette next to me, so life's good. We're all right. So <laughs> have a good one.